The biggest investment you're going to make in your property, short of actually buying it, 99% of the time will come down to, well, shoreline property, 99% of the time will come down to your shoreline erosion control. So your seawall or your rip ramp. It costs a ton of money. It's always the biggest expense and the biggest worry when buying a home with an original seawall that was done in the 50s, 60s, 70s. Now, when we're talking about original seawalls, the seawalls that were done back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s aren't like what we do today a lot of the time. They were concrete seawalls, cinder block seawalls. Oftentimes they're poured on site. They didn't have inspections. They didn't have building code. They didn't have any parameters. They didn't have certain coverage on the rebar that they needed to. So now we see a lot of failing seawalls. The concrete seawalls we do today meet a much more strict building code. They're going to last a lot longer, even though the ones that we have from even say the 70s have lasted 50 years, which is quite a long time. But I go out to a lot of uh, properties that are for sale where people are worried about the seawalls or prop people that just call up and want to know how to extend the life of their seawall. The biggest tip I can tell you for extending the life of an existing concrete seawall is inspect it all the time. Get in the water, look at it, look for cracks on the top, look for cracks, look for erosion behind it. If you have cracks on the dock surface, you're going to want to fill those cracks because you have rebar inside the concrete and every time there's a crack over it, water's getting down into the concrete more so than it's absorbing because concrete does absorb water to a certain extent. Uh, when you have a crack over the rebar, you're just allowing that water to get straight to the rebar, which is gonna cause spalling. So if you have cracking, you're gonna wanna take a grinder, open that crack up a bit, which may sound um, counterproductive, but you need to open it up enough to be able to get enough sealant, epoxy sealant, elastomeric sealant, whatever you're gonna use, um, concrete crack repair, to be able to put it in there to stop the water from getting into it. You gotta open it up for that. A lot of times they'll cut a groove in it like a V and then pack that full of epoxy. If it's on the wall, you can use, depending on how big it is, you can also use epoxy if it's a small crack. A big crack, you might wanna use hydraulic cement, which is a type of cement you can get from Home Depot anywhere that you can apply vertically. Um, it's very strong, lasts a long time. It's not like a regular concrete pour where you need forms and then it's gonna run everywhere. You can literally take it, mix up like a paste almost, and smear it on there, and then it's going to seal that area off. It won't last forever, you're gonna have to keep maintaining it, but that's one of the biggest reasons seawalls fail is because of holes in the seawall, cracks in the seawalls, you lose fill from underneath it. Then what happens is, so you have a seawall like this, and um, you got water on this side and you have land on this side. When you lose the land from this side, it's now hollow behind it. You have nothing behind it. So number one, you have tiebacks back here. Now, if this is the face of your seawall and you have a tieback, the seawall wants to push like this, right? Out into the water because there's nothing really on this side besides the water pressure pushing on it. So the seawall wants to push out and you have the tieback behind it. The only thing that's creating resistance is the earth between the tieback and the seawall because the seawall wants to pull that tieback out but the seawall can't pull the tie back out because there's all this earth between it that's gotta push through. So when you lose that earth between, you're hollow between your tie back and your seawall and the whole thing can shift out. Alternatively, the impact strength from the, from the water side come from the backing of the soil behind it. Great example I heard somebody say one time is, imagine you're just standing in uh, the middle of a room, nothing behind you, nothing on each side of you, nothing in front of you. Somebody comes up to you, your feet are together, they're not spread apart, and somebody gives you a big push. Well, you're going to fall back. You're gonna, you might not fall on the ground, but you're gonna be, you know, stumbled back. Now, take that same application and stand up with your back entirely flat against uh, the side of a building. Tell that same person to push you. They can't because you have all that earth behind you or all that, um, all that structure behind you. Same thing with the seawall. If it has all that earth behind it, when water and things are hitting it, it's got nowhere to go. It just stops. But if it's hollow behind it, it can push through, crack, it has area to move. When concrete moves, concrete cracks. Concrete's obviously not flexible by any stretch of the imagination. So without that fill behind, it's going to move, it's going to crack. So the earth behind it keeps it from moving backward. The earth behind it also keeps it from moving forward because of the tie back. So it's very important that you watch for erosion behind it and you fix your cracks. And a lot of times too, you won't see erosion actually behind the wall. If you have cracks, I've seen one where it's a, uh, you walk behind it, it looks perfectly fine. There's no signs of erosion behind it. You lean over the edge, look at it. There's huge cracks and you can see big voids behind there. And every time the tide comes up or rainwater's coming behind, it's literally just pulling more and more material out. So those are my tips to making your concrete seawall last as long as possible so you don't have to put that expensive investment into your property sooner than you need to.